There, I have fitted and scraped and sanded all of the long spindles and fit them in their holes. I confirm they're in their right places by this nice curve up here. Now when we legged up, we did a wet fit. We don't do that with the arm rail. We will test all these pieces dry and make sure they're going to line up with the holes in the seat. And if that works, then we can do a final assembly. When assembling the back, sit in front of the chair. You have a lot more control over this process in this position you have almost no control. You'll drive yourself crazy if you're outside the chair. I'm not going to drive the tenons into their holes. I have to get this apart after I test it. I just want to make sure everything's going to line up. And there we go. Everything, all the pieces, will fit into their holes. Now, I haven't driven anything. I'm going to take it apart again and glue it up. But I've confirmed that this back will go on this chair. So let's disassemble. Now that I've given the back a dry test fit, I'm going to glue and do the final assembly. And there's a sequence to how I'm going to do this. First, I'm going to apply glue to all of the blind holes. Then, using a coffee stirrer, I'm going to swab the glue so that it covers all the inside surface of the holes. The next step will be to apply glue to the through holes in the arms for the short spindles and for the stump. And to try to keep the glue from flowing all over the place and making a mess, I'll stand the arm up like this on its edge. And then insert the pieces. At this point, I want to be moving along quickly because I don't want that glue to set up on me. That's why we use white glue, because it has a long open time. I'll set that aside. And I'm going to glue these two holes last. And the reason I do these last is if I'm continuing to work and the glue is in the hole, it's actually running out of the hole 
onto the stretcher. It's going to do that anyway, but I want to minimize it. I just paint the entire surface of that hole. And now we're ready to assemble. Okay, now I want to set the stumps. I'm going to do them by twisting them down into place. And the reason I do that is the locking tapers can act like a wedge and split the size if I drive too hard. And now I'll drive the short spindles into place. And they hold everything while I focus my attention on the rear, the long spindles. Now, my, what I'm looking for here is the best placement. I want the three center spindles to be straight, like guitar strings. So I'm going to twist them so that they look as straight as possible from my point of view, which is about the point where all the sight lines converge, about here. And even though these spindles have been chosen for the curve to be in this placement, I want to see them as straight lines from the front of the chair. That's the placement I want. Now I'm going to drive these spindles into place. Now this is the risk. As I drive these spindles, if the blow is not directly down the spindle, I can snap it. And I don't want that to happen. So I'm sliding one of these plastic PV tubes over the spindle. That keeps it from bowing. If it can't bow, it's less likely to break. And I check to make sure the spindles are still look straight from my the focus point. And the shorter of the two tubes goes on the end spindles. There we go. Everything is assembled, and now we're going to focus on our dimensions. Remember that it was 9 and 5 eighths on the vertical right behind the stump, and 9 and an eighth the vertical. There we go. Everything's down to height, but I still have a few other tests that I want to do before I wedge this up, just to make sure that it looks right. My goal now is to get the arm rail to lie in a plane. And I can adjust it with the hammer. And now, I'm just going to confirm the results with the winding sticks.
There, that looks good. Now, do the same side to side. Very nice. We're ready now to wedge it up. All right, we're assembled and we're now ready to wedge. And I'm going to begin by trimming all of these spindles. Maybe about an eighth of an inch above the arm rail. Now here's a safety tip. Do not grip the arm rail like this when cutting the end of the spindle, because guess what the saw comes in contact with next? This is the best placement right here. And just before it comes off, I'll pick it up like that. With all this, the spindles and the two stumps trimmed, I'm going to split them to receive the wedges. Now once again, the split is going to go side to side at a right angle to the grain of the arm rail. Go in the direction of the arm rail, well, that's how we split the oak in the first place. Wedges, series of wedges in the direction of the grain. Okay, now we're going to wedge. And just a, a, a moment to talk about the wedge. Once again, I'm not going to make individual wedges and try to drive them. I'm going to use a long piece of wood and I'm going to make wedges on it, cut them off, sharpen again just like a pencil. The, the wedges in this case are more blunt than they were in the tops of the legs. The reason being that the arm rail is only 5 8 inches thick and I want the spreading action of the wedge to take place over a short distance. And so I'm going to make, the, make that happen by using a blunter wedge. A long slender wedge will risk uh, splitting down below the arm rail. Apply just a dab of glue. Trim. Now we make another wedge. Just a spot of glue that keeps it from ever backing out. Now, the last two joints to be wedged are under the seat. That's going to require us to return to the bench. We're going to uh, trim and wedge the stump joints at, under, at the bottom of the seat. A couple of things to notice as we do this. The chair is up with the arm rail on the bench top. The reason being that in wedging this, I don't want to risk driving it out of its location. As long as it's, it's, in this, it's in this setup, I can't drive the stump because 
it's being supported by the bench top. The other is this safety feature here. Clamp the seat to the bench while you're working on it. You're going to have to go make wedges. You're going to be moving around. You risk knocking the chair off the bench. And if it lands on one of those spindles and breaks, it just ruins your whole day. The clamps are really nice, uh, inexpensive piece of insurance. Once again, our wedges have to be at a right angle to the grain of the seat. So the wedges are going to go front to back. Turn them and you have a really good chance of splitting your seat right there. And down the axis of the stump. Now, this time, because this is a, a bigger joint than the arm rail, I'm using a piece of wedge stock that's commensurate with the size of the joint. So it's a, a, a wider piece of stock. A little glue. And notice that the wedge and the chisel are long enough to get me above the stretcher so I'm not fighting with those pieces. Okay, last step will be to trim and scrape the ends of the spindles. Okay, just to reinforce, when wedging, use wedge stock that is commensurate with the size of the joint. This is the piece I used for the stumps and the short spindles. This is the piece I used for the bottom of the stumps. I would not want to reverse them and try to use this to wedge a joint that small. Very inefficient. Next step is to tr trim the ends of the spindles and the stumps. And the way I'll do that is to take a shallow gouge and skew across the wood. And I'll do that by gripping the spindle here and using my thumb. Remember the concept of patting the dog when we're making the seat and going down the grain? Same thing applies here. Make sure you shave in this direction on parts that lean this way. You want to shave this way so you're not going against the dog's hair. Okay. Now we'll scrape everything flush and then give it a quick sanding.
Okay, we're ready now to move on to the bow. Notice, by the way, that when I trimmed the ends of these tenons, I did not drive the, the gouge with a hammer. This structure is just not heavy enough to take that amount of shock. Thank you for watching this content. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to this channel. And check back frequently for more Windsor chair making tips and tutorials.